Hey guys, Anthony Full Before Diesel. Just wanted to give you a bit of a review on these um, Oricon handheld UHFs. Um, this is a fairly new vehicle to us and with an emphasis on travelling light and less is more. We're obviously looking at some different options, what we can use for communication and obviously really wanted to suss out how well it works. So this video is to help you guys, just to let you know what we've found with these units. So basically this is the handheld in its standard form you know what i mean i think your normal price is around the 250 dollar mark they're apparently dust and waterproof i haven't had a chance to um try that yet but um look that we, we've had the five this is a newer version i had one of the older ones i don't know it was probably, it's probably three or four years old and my father actually uses one of these in his vehicle when he comes on trips with us so he drives one of the prados as well and seems to work really well definitely for a k or two um, once you get a bit further out of range maybe not so good so lucky it's mainly for that sort of use this is what we found anyway so the battery lasts really well with a lot of torque and you know i talk a lot um, the batteries last quite well i think you know three or four days and the battery's in reality about half so i'd probably suggest charging it it depends how much you do talk you know just charge it every night anyway they clip really well onto the base charger, which is a 240 volt charger. You can also use that same base and a car charger, and you can transmit while it's on the charger. There's no issues with that. Someone did ask about it, so I thought I'd include that. Now, the other thing we did is, we got, see these antenna, and we've taken on board. People said, oh, you know, that could be rubbing or whatever. So normally you'd use maybe a bit of, um, you know, black tape or something that blends in, but purposely we've put a nice colourful tape on there so you can see what we've done. We're gonna, we've risked it with a magnet, you can see the magnet on the body. This antenna is really small, it's very light and the magnet's really strong, so it's not going to move anywhere, but I want to leave it on there for a full sort of three or four weeks and just see if there's any markings under that, and I will add that, I'll do another video or I'll um, add it to this one. It wasn't actually rubbing on the paintwork, so, but we put a bit of tape there. And the other thing we did, I just want to show you how I run it. And of course, um, a little bit there where the cable's sitting. But look, we tested it without that there for probably, I don't know, it was about, I don't know, a week or two. But look, the cable just runs down here into the seat, into the, look, you know, a bit of sand and whatever, the kids. Anyway, um, the, the coax into the seat bin, you know, the, the bag on the back of the bin, in there and back out of it again there and then down the side of the seat there. I think the car needs a clone. Anyway, back in the front, and it just comes around underneath the seat there. Bada boom, and you get this little adapter with these little magnetic base antennas, and you just back, and it just sits there, and I'm, I literally, for those people that can't be bothered picking up the microphone, so this is good for a number of reasons. So it's good if you can't be bothered picking up the microphone because I don't pick it up. It sits there. I literally just put my finger here and go click, click like that there's your there's your speaker so you hear everyone else really well and they hear you really well because that's your microphone there as well just there and i guarantee you i'm not picking it up i'm just speaking at my normal voice and people are telling me they can hear me loud and clear so really good battery life really good um transmit and receive with the microphone and the um and the speaker cable easy to run so for someone that doesn't really use the vehicle let's say you know they're not don't need it all the time you only do it you know a couple of trips a year a couple of weeks at a time this is a really good option where you don't have to worry about wiring it in and it doesn't switch on and off every time you turn your power on and off you can get it out of the car and get it out of the way when you're not using it it's just a really good option um what else did i want to tell you about it um really simple to just use that adapter don't over tighten it you just got to do that brass so it's uh, yeah, brass fitting there up just, just lightly. There's a little O-ring in there. As soon as you feel that make contact, that'll stop it from coming loose. And then that little adapter, this nut on the back here, that just screws in that one there, screws into this one also. So that, I could just about show you how that works. But anyway, we won't worry about it. It's pretty simple stuff. Um, what did I want to show you? So we've overcome any issues with it. There's not going to do any damage to the vehicle. I didn't think too hard about it when I went, look, I'll just run it through there. And it's been like that for a couple of weeks, no dramas, all right. So the door just shuts over it. Obviously, the car, it moves a little bit, but um, it hasn't caused any issues. We'll get the car all cleaned up and get the tape off and show you that in another video, just to show you, you know, to do with the um, external antenna. I can't remember the part number, what it was. I'm sure 
someone, I'm sure you'll figure it out, it's Oricom products anyway, so you can look it up on their website, obviously probably oricom.com.au. What else did I want to tell you? There was one other point to the whole thing. Oh, the range. Okay, that's what I want to tell you about the range. This antenna on the roof here increases the range massively, is how I'd describe it, okay? I've got to say, I've become used to using this radio over the last couple of weeks, not this handheld, right? So we've basically got two that, because I thought, oh, it might go flat, and what I'll do, I'll just swap them over. There was no need for that. I only needed one, and you just charge it every couple of days. So you could charge it every night. If you forget a night, then it doesn't matter, because like I said, I used it sort of three days, no problem. Four days, I think it was, and it was down to two-thirds of the battery, which you know two-thirds when it shows you that. It's probably less than half anyway, and it's going to cut out on you soon. So just charge them up every few days. The range. So we spoke to each other, right? I'll show you the vehicle I was talking to, so you know, right? There it is there. There's the Hilux with the antenna on the front, whatever. Generally, he was behind me. Um, up to 5Ks behind, mate. We, neither of us could believe it. It was loud and clear. So using these handhelds with that little antenna on the roof, we only got, look, anything from 1 to 2Ks. Now, you've got to remember the line of sight thing is a general rule. So you can use a little half a watt handheld or a two watt, and if you're up on two high points, you can talk 50 kilometers, right? That's the line of sight thing. If you're high enough, remember the, the earth curves and all that sort of thing, you know? So the higher you are, if you've got line of sight, it's all good. Now, the wattage obviously increases that. So these are five watt, and obviously the more power you've got, the better that will work as well. But with a five watt radio, these, these things, you, you wouldn't know that it was a handheld and a magnetic base on the roof. You know, and they're meant to be half a dB, that, that antenna on the roof, so look, whatever. Um, all I can tell you is maybe because it's just up that little bit higher, 5Ks down the road, you know, we took marks, measured it, and all that sort of thing, loud and clear. It'd probably go further again if you tried communicating from, um, from the top of the hill. If you tried communicating from top of hill to top of hill, obviously it's going to go a lot further. But I'm talking generally, regularly talking, regularly checking the distance thing about 5k's loud and clear even when we're both down in a bit of a ditch all right guys that's the review on the oricon 5 watt handheld at this stage i'll give you some bit more information when we've used these a bit longer like i said we've got the older model we've used that for years never had an issue works really well generally we keep those campsites turned on on the channel we're using so when people are coming to camp if they can't find us or whatever they can just give us a yell on the radio so they're handy like that and it's always handy to have one when you, um, you know, just in case you're one in the... Look, I, I have antennas break regularly because, <laughs> you know, when you use them, it seems to be what happens, especially mounted on the bull bar, which is why I'm looking for other options. We are going to upgrade an antenna and probably use one of those K-On mounts, the, you know, from kon.com.au, the rear antenna mount, and put an antenna on the rear door there and see how that goes with the handheld. That's the first step. And see if that increases it much so it's a lot of testing so we can let you guys know exactly sort of what works what doesn't in reality um, and then we'll probably upgrade to a permanent unit in the vehicle anyway but the problem with these you know you get a nice new car you don't want to start drilling holes in dashes and things can be a bit untidy so I think this is a really good option I don't use the handbrake I haven't used the handbrake for two weeks generally I'll use it if I'm on a hill but you know what there's not many hills around if you're in hills I think you're in the wrong spot maybe as long as you're not in the high country. But you just don't stop on the hills. You stop when you get to the bottom, you see. Anyway, all good, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope that helps you. A bit of information what we've found. The Oricom 5-watt handheld radio. Again, part numbers, no idea. Check them out at oricom.com.au if you're interested. Thanks for watching. See ya.